Radio for Vito. Heavy lift gear. We're not leaving him here. Yeah, you're not. Oh, crazy fool. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. And I don't do bits and pieces. Where is she, Chief? Where's Cortana? Don't make a girl a promise. If you know you can't keep it. She stayed behind. The launch of Halo 3 was an event unlike any other the games industry has ever seen. The legendary franchise's story would be brought to a close, and while Bungie would still go on to make two more Halo games with Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach, Halo 3 would be their final game in the series' chronology, with the Master Chief heading back to Earth to finish the fight. It was an appropriately climactic story, and the hype and anticipation surrounding it in the lead up to its launch was also appropriately at a fever pitch. And in retrospect, it's fair to say that Halo 3 did a great job of bringing that original trilogy to a close. Over the last few weeks, we've spoken about all the games that precede Halo 3 in the series' timeline, having recently wrapped up Halo 2 and Halo 3 ODST, both of which lead up to the dramatic conclusion that is Halo 3. Here, we'll be continuing our story recap of the entire series and talk about the final Master Chief story Bungie ever told. By the time Halo 3 begins, many dramatic events have set the stage for what's about to happen next. Master Chief was successful in stopping Installation 05 from firing, but that also activated the Forerunner installation known as the Ark, which can now be used to remotely fire the entire Halo array, effectively destroying all sentient life in the Milky Way galaxy. The Covenant have suffered some losses, with the elites having splintered off from the Collective and now fighting against it alongside the humans thanks to the betrayal of the Brutes. Meanwhile, of the Covenant's three hierarchs, only one remains truth. That said, the Covenant have discovered and excavated a massive Forerunner artifact close to the outskirts of the ruined Earth city of New Mombasa, which can take them directly to the Ark, and knowing the obvious dangers that that threat poses, humans and elites together are fighting desperately to stop the Covenant from enacting its plan. And of course, the Flood is running rampant in the galaxy as well, with the Grave Mind having taken control of former Covenant capital High Charity, where Cortana remains even now. So yeah, stuff is happening. Lots of it. Halo 3 begins a couple of weeks after the end of Halo 2, with Master Chief arriving back on Earth and reuniting with the likes of Sergeant Avery Johnson and the Arbiter. After fighting through Covenant forces in their path, they arrive at a UNSC outpost close by, where they meet with Commander Miranda Keyes and Fleet Admiral Terence Hood, and together, all of them devise their next step. And that next step is pretty obvious at this point. Kill Truth, fight back against the Covenant, and stop them from reaching the Ark. The odds, however, are firmly stacked against them. The UNSC base is promptly attacked by overwhelming Covenant forces, and the Chief and all the rest have no option but to retreat, causing the destruction of the base with a bomb in the process. They reconvene again in the nearby city of Voi, but once again, their plans are thwarted. As Master Chief sets out to destroy Covenant anti-air weapons to allow Hood's fleet to destroy the Forerunner artifact, Truth uses it to open up a massive split space portal and head through it, with the entire Covenant fleet following him. At the same time, a Covenant cruiser under the Flood's control crashes into Voy, spewing out scores of the parasitic aliens. Conveniently enough, a force of elites arrives on the scene at the same time as well, and together, they and the humans fight back against the Flood to stop their spread. Chief, meanwhile, learns, thanks to Commander Keys and elites, that there is a UNSC construct aboard the crashed ship. Believing it to be Cortana, Master Chief retrieves the construct, but realizes that it is not Cortana herself, but a message recorded by her and left on the ship for the UNSC to find. The message, as you'd expect, turns out to be instrumental in informing the next phase of their plan. It's brief and not entirely detailed, but it tells them enough. Cortana says that the key to stopping the Covenant and the Flood and ensuring that the Halo Array isn't fired is on the other side of the portal opened up by Truth. And although Admiral Hood suspects that the message might be a trap, Chief convinces him that Cortana can't be trusted. 
And so, while Hood and the UNSC fleet stayed behind to protect Earth, Master Chief, the Arbiter, Johnson, and his splinter UNSC force led by Keys head through the portal. They find, unsurprisingly, the Ark, a massive installation created by the Forerunners about 100,000 years ago, drifting ominously through space thousands of light years away from the fringes of the Milky Way galaxy. Unsurprisingly, things don't exactly go to plan here either. Upon their arrival on the Ark, they quickly find the installation's map room, where they learn that to access its control room, they're going to have to deactivate three shield towers. Master Chief, the Arbiter, and Johnson each head to one of the towers, and the former two successfully deactivate one each. But Johnson finds himself faced with an overwhelming Covenant defense and is forced to retreat. The Chief and the Arbiter both arrive at the third tower soon afterward to deactivate it, but when they get there, they find that Johnson and his forces are nowhere to be seen. And as if all of this wasn't chaotic enough, the Gravemind-controlled High Charity arrives on the scene as well, crashing onto the Ark. Together, the Chief and the Arbiter head to the control room, but at this time, Truth broadcasts a message for everyone in the vicinity to see. It's revealed that he has captured Johnson. The Covenant, as you might remember, cannot use and activate Forerunner artifacts and installations, which is why Truth needs Johnson. And just as he is about to force the Sergeant to activate the Ark, Keys arrives on the scene, flying a pelican and crashing it into the control room. She quickly realizes, however, that she's heavily outnumbered by brutes and covenant defenses and decides that since she has no way of killing them all, she's going to have to kill herself and Johnson to stop Truth from activating the Ark. Half of that goes to plan. Truth kills Keys and forces Johnson's hand on the activation panel, bringing the Ark to life and remotely activating the galaxy's entire Halo array. Once again, a desperate situation makes uneasy allies out of Master Chief, the Arbiter, and the Gravemind and his Flood, with all of them being forced to work together to get to the top of the control room, kill Truth, and deactivate the Ark once again. After a grueling fight to the top in which they are faced with strong Covenant defenses, they ultimately arrive at the top. The Arbiter confronts Truth, but their conversation is a short one, and the former ends up killing the latter. Master Chief, meanwhile, deactivates all of the Halo Rings once again. But now that Truth and his Covenant are out of the equation, a bigger threat has come to light. The Gravemind betrays them, to no one's surprise, preventing them from escaping. While Johnson manages to use Keyes' crashed pelican to flee, Master Chief and the Arbiter are forced to find a different path, and while they're doing so, Chief learns some crucial new information. It's revealed that a new Halo Ring is being constructed at the Ark as a replacement for Installation 04, which, of course, was destroyed by Master Chief during the events of Halo Combat Evolved, and quickly, a final plan forms itself in Chief's head. He decides to activate the new Halo Ring in order to kill the Flood, since its blast radius wouldn't deal too much damage to the life in the Milky Way, what with the Ark being far away from the galaxy's rim. To do that, of course, he needs an activation index, and he knows exactly where to find one. Cortana still has the index that they almost use on Installation 04, and so, with the help of the Arbiter, he heads to High Charity. There, he fights through the Flood, retrieves Cortana at long last, and sets the ship to self-destruct just as Cortana and the Arbiter flee. Knowing what's about to come next, the surviving forces of the UNSC and the Elites head back to Earth through the Slipspace portal, while Master Chief, Johnson, Cortana, and the Arbiter head to the new Halo Ring. In the ring's central control room, things quickly come to a head. The Flood has grown greatly, while the Gravemind is trying to reconstruct as well. Chief and the others fight through opposing forces, and just as Johnson is about to activate the ring, he's killed by none other than 343 Guilty Spark. Yeah, he's still around and making a mess of things for everyone around him. Guilty Spark, it turns out, views this new ring as a replacement for the destroyed Installation 04, of which he was the assigned monitor, and vowing to protect it as its new monitor, decides to stop it from being activated, and in turn, destroyed. 
Master Chief takes Guilty Spark on and finally destroys the annoying little machine. The Halo Ring is activated, and Master Chief Cortana and the Arbiter make a tense and narrow escape from the installation, first by driving a warthog through a field of fire and destruction, and then climbing aboard the UNSC frigate forward unto dawn. The ship successfully takes off, but their escape, once again, doesn't go exactly according to plan. Though, it makes it far enough away from the Halo Ring to not be caught in its blast radius as it attempts to escape back to Earth through the slipspace portal. The portal closes on it. The front half of the Ford Unto Dawn, carrying the Arbiter, makes its way back to Earth, while the rear half, carrying the Chief, is left behind, stranded in space, far away from Earth, and on the edges of the galaxy. Ultimately, though, the biggest threats humanity has ever seen are brought to an end. The war against the Covenant is over, and the Hierarchs are now dead. The Flood has been destroyed once and for all, and, of course, the threat of the Halo Array has been dealt with as well. Admiral Hood holds a memorial service back on Earth in honor of those who lost their lives during this long-drawn conflict, and grudgingly thanks the Arbiter for playing his part in humanity's victory over the Covenant, following which the elites head back to Sanghelios, their home world. And what about Master Chief and Cortana? They didn't make it back home, but obviously they're still alive and kicking. As the destroyed forward unto dawn drifts through space, Cortana informs the Chief that it'll be a while before anyone picks up the distress beacon that she's activated. Master Chief enters cryosleep, telling her to wake him when she needs him. If you finish the game on Legendary Difficulty, Halo 3's final scene shows the ship floating in the direction of a mysterious Forerunner planet, setting the stage for the events of Halo 4. And that's it. The fight is finished, done and dusted, well, for now anyway. The next leg of Halo, under the guidance of 343 Industries, brings the Chief and Cortana back and puts them in the midst of new conflicts and stories. Of course, the Halo series' track record under 343 has been far less consistent and impressive than it was under Bungie, but from a narrative perspective, there's still plenty to talk about in these games. When we come back, we'll talk about Halo 4, the game that kicks off that next journey. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.